Welcome to the Leaders in Payments podcast, where we talk to C-level leaders from across the payments landscape. We'll be discussing the products and services that impact the payment space today, as well as trends and predictions for the future of payments. We will also hear stories from our guests about their journeys to the top. What we believe is where the world is headed and where we're headed is making a decision whether you use RTP, you know, which is often the term for faster payments, or whether it's ACHY or push to debit, virtual card, or Zelle, they kind of all look the same from a delivery. So if I want to get paid today, I can choose one of those. So how do I make the choice? The payee shouldn't have to make the choice. The payer shouldn't have to make the choice. The network should have the intelligence to make the choice based off of the payer's cost parameters and risk parameters and then when the payee expects to get paid. That was Ben Turner, the CEO of Veratuity, and he is our special guest on this episode, episode 164 of the Leaders in Payments podcast, and I'm your host, Greg Myers. Ben has a passion for figuring out how to do things different and better. And his first experience of moving money was helping Fannie Mae move funds across telephone lines. Ben Turner has a pretty simple philosophy when it comes to his business. All you should ever have to say is how much, to who, and when, and the rest should just happen. Veritudi is a payout platform that connects banks, payers, and payees to first-time and on-time verified payouts and pay-by-anything experiences. Some of the most common use cases for this platform include the insurance company that wants to send a payment to their client after an accident via PayPal, or the mortgage company that wants to pay out escrow via a wire transfer. Ben and I also talk about where he sees the industry in the next two to three years, the rise of alternative payment methods, Veratuity's plan for offering pay by crypto later this year, and the concept of a world without payment rails. We've got a great episode ahead, so let's get started. Hi, Ben. Thank you for being here, and welcome to the Leaders in Payments podcast. Thanks, Greg. Really appreciate you having me. Absolutely. So let's dive right in. Tell our audience a little bit about yourself. We'll cover your career in a minute, but maybe talk a little bit about where you grew up, where you went to school, where you currently live, a few things like that. Sure. I grew up in a a little town in Southern Ohio whose claim to fame is General Sherman was born there. And then I went to uh, undergraduate at Miami University, the cradle of coaches and business school at Tulane University. And I now live in the Washington, D.C. area. Okay, great. Well, let's dive in and talk about the company. So tell the audience what Veratuity does. Yeah, so what Veratuity does is it connects banks, payers, and payees to what we call first-time and on-time verified payouts and pay-by-anything experiences. And what we mean by that is a payer should be able to make a payment to their payee, so an insurer paying a claimant or a retailer paying a refund, and it should go through on the first time, and the payee should receive it when they expect, whether that's today, tomorrow, or 20 days from now. And at the same time, the payee should be able to decide how they want to receive it, whether it's pushed to their debit card, whether it's to their PayPal account, or whether it's a a wire. And you mentioned a couple of verticals in there. So what all verticals do you work in? Yeah, so we support multiple verticals. The way to think about us is much like in e-commerce where there's a Shopify who handles the workflow around buying a product and checking out, and then there's a Stripe that handles the payment. We handle the payout layer and connect to things like AP systems, claim automation systems, treasury platforms, or even check files. Okay, good segue into my next question. Do you go to market through those sort of partner channels and those integrators, or do you also have a direct sales channel? We sell to banks and we look at banks as our partners and they sell them to their commercial clients who have payout needs. So everything from insurance companies to gaming companies, to auto dealerships, to even NFL teams. So is that like they white label your product? That is correct. Yeah. So the banks are able to white label it and sell it as their own product and the payers then can brand it how they want. So you're using insurance as an example. If an insurance company has three lines of business, auto, boat, and home, they can create a payout experience unique for each of those. What payment types are available, what kind of verification has to happen, and what the branding looks like. So we really give the power to the bank to enable their commercial clients 
to handle payouts the way they want to do business so that they can lower the cost of their payouts and drive up satisfaction with their payees or their customers. Okay. And same question, but two parts. Are there certain sizes of banks? And then are there certain sizes of their commercial clients that are best fit for your solution? Yeah. I mean, we tend to work with the larger banks and mid-sized to large payout clients, but it really, you know, for us, it doesn't really make a difference. It can be a small business or it can be a fortune thousand company. We have payers on our platform that will do 5,000 payouts a month, and we have some that will do 30,000 a day. Okay. And what countries are you in? So today we support 140 countries, but we're dependent on what our bank customers want to support. So if a bank wants to support all 140, we'll do that. Or if they want to support just Mexico, we'll do that. Okay. And what would you say differentiates your company from your competitors out there? Yeah, I mean, it really comes down to this core principle, first time and on time verified payouts. And how we differentiate with that is we believe that you have to look at the entire stream of actions that happen to make a a payout possible and make sure that you're mitigating the fraud, errors, and data mistakes that just happen in the world of payouts. So for us, it's... We use holistic trans verification to know your transaction. And because we're able to understand that transaction, make sure that we're mitigating fraud, making sure we're mitigating errors and mistakes, we're able to then offer our payers the ability to offer their customers choice in how they receive that payout. And that really differentiates us in the market is this first time and on time verified payout is unique. Okay. And how big is the company today? So we're two years old. We're growing rapidly. We have 37 employees and pretty rapid growth trajectory. Have you gone out and raised capital? We did. We raised our A round last March with ForgePoint Capital and Ardent Ventures as our two investors. So you started kind of during the pandemic. Can you uh, maybe talk about how that was maybe positive or negative in any way? Yeah, it was actually a great time to start a company, right? I'm a, I'm a big believer that you know starting companies when there's turbulence sometimes is the best time because it gives you time to build out your product to the point where when you're ready to go live, you don't have an MVP, you have a version one product. So for us, a couple of things out of the pandemic, one, there was a large push to moving to digital in the payout world, which was helpful for our business. The second is... It enabled us to assemble a team that has a lot of experience dealing with large customers like banks. And so that the found, we were able to create a foundation that has gotten us to where we are today. Can you maybe give us a couple of use cases, just maybe for those who aren't as familiar with the payout side? You mentioned insurance. So what would sort of an example be in the insurance space? Sure. And before I do, let me just kind of set the bars here. So when we look at the world of payments, we break it into two things. We break it into what we call pay-in. So think of e-commerce, you're buying something, and payouts. And we're focused on payouts. So use cases in the payout world are you had a car accident and now you need to receive the payment for that accident. You don't want to wait on a check. You want to have it sent to your PayPal account or you want to have it wired to your check-in account. Another good use case is you just sold your house and you have to get the money back from your escrow accounts. So again, you don't want a check, you wanna be able to receive that into your checking account or push to a debit card. Another good use case is, let's say you're an insurance broker and you're receiving commissions for selling policies. You don't wanna wait on a check, you wanna have that wire to you. We fit a wide range of use cases, even things like online gaming companies that hold tournaments and the winners need to get paid. Yeah, that's interesting. So who in this scenario drives how someone gets paid? Is it the person receiving the money or pushing the money out? So historically, it was driven by what people call the payer. So the businesses that are sending you the money. And if you think about it, that's backwards. In today's world of choice, the payee or or the consumer or the business that's receiving the money should be able to choose how they want to get the money. But the hard part is, is you have to have enough intelligence in the network to know how to send them the money. So simple example, if I, if I win an online game and I won $5,000, I can get that in my PayPal account. 
But if it's 60,000, I can't because the limit for PayPal is 50,000. So our platform has the intelligence to know what payment types, so payment type is, are things like Zelle, ACH, Wire, can support the size of the transaction, but at the same time allows the payer to decide which payment types they'll support based on cost. So we introduce choice. We introduce choice for the payer in terms of being able to offer payment type choice to their payees, and we enable choice for the payees to choose how they want to receive the money. Okay. And is the business model built on sort of a SaaS fee or a platform fee, or is it transaction fees or a little of both? It's transaction fees, right? We fundamentally believe that pricing or how we charge should match to the value we deliver. So we don't, it's not a percent of the transaction. It's a fixed transaction fee based on volume. And we deliver that value of first time and on time payouts and payment choice. Okay. Well, where do you see that whole industry headed, say, in the next two to three years? Where we're headed and where I believe the industry is headed is it's really about knowing that whole transaction. Because if you know that whole transaction, you can really mitigate the fraud, the errors, the mistakes, and the risk that live in the world of payouts. The other thing that I think is going to drive it is more alternative ways to receive payment. So, for example, later this summer, we'll offer pay by crypto. That's an example of how the world is looking for more choice. And the consumer or the payee or the business that's the payee should be able to choose how they receive it without the payer incurring more risk. What other trends do you see going on in the industry? So one of the big trends is more and more intelligence going into the networks. I mean, I started this business with kind of two simple premises in mind. One is why do businesses and why do payees have to understand what a payment rail is? I mean, those of us in the, the world of payments barely understand what a payment rail is. So I think that disappears. I think the concept of payment rails disappears. I also think the other big premise we started the business with is really all you should ever have to say is how much to whom and when, and the rest should just happen, which is how the rest of your world works. Right? You don't jump on your iPhone and have to pick which network you want to use to call Anthony. Where do things like faster payments and, you know, account to account payments, where does that come into play? So to me, that's why we talk about on time. Those are just different ways to get the money to someone based on the time they expect to receive it. And so what we believe is where the world is headed and where we're headed is making a decision whether you use RTP, you know, which is often the term for faster payments, or whether it's ACH wire, push to debit, virtual card, or Zelle, they kind of all look the same from a delivery. So if I want to get paid today, I can choose one of those. So how do I make the choice? The payee shouldn't have to make the choice. The payer shouldn't have to make the choice. The network should have the intelligence to make the choice based off of the payer's cost parameters and risk parameters, and then when the payee expects to get paid. Okay. I assume when FedNow launches, that's sort of just another method, right? It's, it's just another method, but, but I think you're, you're highlighting why the concept of Rails, we believe, will disappear is what is the difference between what FedNow is going to enable and what same-day ACH enables and what the current RTP network enables? There really isn't. Right. And it sounds like you've really removed all of the friction from worrying about what to choose and who chooses it. it. Right. And that's fundamental to how we believe the world should work and how our platform works. The other big premise to make that possible is you have to know your transaction. So if you understand that transaction and all the relationships that exist in the payout transaction, then you can deliver on that promise. I recently read about, and this is somewhat related, but how a lot more products and services for treasury departments of banks and other larger companies that have treasury departments is moving to mobile. So do you have a mobile aspect to your business too? Yeah, we don't care if it's mobile, desktop, we're indifferent. So our platform is what's called reactive. And depending on what the payee is using and what the payer is using, our application will automatically adjust itself to make it a good experience. Well, let's switch gears a little bit and talk about you. If you don't mind, tell us about your journey, how you became the CEO and president there. So maybe just kind of walk us through your career. Yeah, sure. So I, I got started in technology with AT&T. And my first experience with moving money was 
my customer was Fannie Mae, and they literally were moving their Fed funds across the telephone line. And so my job was to figure out how do you modernize that? How do you actually make that safer and faster? And that's what got me started exploring the world of payments. And then fast forward, ended up as part of the uh, early team at Network Solutions, where when we launched our e-commerce business, there were no concepts of fraud detection for online transaction. There was no concept of a billing system to handle online transaction. There were barely payment gateways. So we had to solve for that ourselves. And one of the big things that we figured out was if you understand who you're doing business with, you have a higher likelihood that that transaction isn't going to be fraudulent and that you're going to be able to deliver the product the customer bought. So from there, we ended up getting acquired by VeriSign and went from VeriSign to starting my own consulting firm, helping businesses figure out how to launch new products, all in the tech space, predominantly around identity and security. And again, it's that convergence. As I did that, I saw the convergence of identity, verification, and payments as a real opportunity in the market. So when the pandemic started, I kind of saw this opening or this opportunity to build a business around that convergence. How do you put together verification, and payments and create something that will solve the problems that exist in the world of payouts today, where you can see failure rates and a failure rate and payments can be fraud, can be errors, but you see rates running from the seven, eight percent all the way up into the low 40 percent. And do you have any co-founders or are you the sole founder? No, I do. I have uh, Chris Smith is a co-founder. Can you talk about that dynamic? I always like to ask sort of when there are multiple founders in a company, sort of how you split the work and how the relationship is and things like that. Yeah. So one of the things that I really love about our company is a lot of us have worked together before. And I think the reason I love that, it's a reflection of the trust we have in each other, but it's also a reflection of the quality of the culture we built. So Chris and I worked together at Network Solutions and reconnected to do this. Anthony Renzetti, who runs Product for us, we worked together at Network Solutions. Our CFO, same thing. And the same is true on the tech side. Our CTO is people he worked with in the past at other companies join us to go on this journey. And I love that about our company. Yeah, that's super cool. It it says a lot about the culture of what you're building. Yeah, you know, and our culture is probably a little different. We operate on three principles. The first one is we call it perfect information, right? So we share information widely so that you can do your job. We don't want silos of information. There are no secrets. We share. And that makes it easier for people to do their jobs and engage in the business and help us all do what we're here to do, which is transform the way payouts work so payers and payees and banks are happier. The second principle is really built around kind of a common, not a common term, but a, a, a term that's used a lot, first principle thinking which is we don't really have any rules. We don't have a rule of how often you come to the office. We have no vacation policy. We have no sick policy. We just don't have rules. We expect you to make good decisions. So we spend a lot of time making sure we're hiring the right people that can make good decisions and operate without rules. The reason we do that is I'm a firm believer. That's how you really drive innovation. You have to give people the freedom to innovate. You have to give them the information they need. And then you have to create a team where you get the right people in the right spots and let them collaborate and do their thing. What would you say are your passions in life? So maybe one business-related passion and one personal passion. Yeah, so a business passion of mine is figuring out how to do things differently and better. Right. So, you know, I have a, a long history of doing that. I came up with the f- first do it yourself e commerce platform. We got a, you know, very proud that we got a four out of five from PC Magazine as an example. What we're doing today is a new way to do something and make life better for the participants or the network. A personal passion is, you know, my kids obviously are my passion on kind of a hobby level. I have a huge passion around anything like mountain biking, trail running. So, kind of the outdoor adventure. Okay. And you said you're you're in Northern Virginia? Correct. So you probably have good trail rides and things like that around there, I would assume. Yeah, there's some great trail rides. There's some great kayaking. There's there's really good trail running. It's a great area to blend, you know, big city living with the outdoors. Well, I always like to ask this question because I, I think everyone brings a different perspective to it. And 
the background is, you know, I started in payments with Chase Payment Tech, typical payment processor back 16 years ago. And, you know, I sort of fell into the payments industry, wasn't really looking necessarily for a career, ended up getting into payments and obviously haven't gotten out yet, which is not a bad thing. But today, I think people look at the industry of payments or if you want to wrap fintech in that, and they see it as an opportunity to build a career, whether that's coming out of school and going directly into it or maybe coming from another industry. So I'm curious, what advice would you give to someone coming into this space? What would you tell them they should do to be successful? The interesting thing about the world of payments is it's a much bigger ecosystem than people would expect. So take the time to decide, do you want to be on the banking side? Do you want to be on the e-commerce side? What do you want to do? Because each of those are completely different jobs and completely different challenges and completely different set of customers. Do you think there are certain aspects of payments that would be better to start in than others? Well, I think anything where you can learn the technical side of payments. So as, as you know, payments are oddly technical. And that's one of the challenges I think that we've all created, uh, those of us that grew up in the payment world. We've made it so technical that it limits some of the consumerization that should happen in the payment world. Yeah. But you can't be successful if you're starting a career in payments without learning how rails work, you know, how they work in different countries, what it means to do currency exchange, all of that. What are your thoughts on starting out in a, in a startup versus a, a large company? Yeah, so I'm a bad person to ask about that because I'm a startup <laughs> guy. I do think you know, large companies have their advantages. You'll get, a, you know, you get a, if you like and need structure, that's a great place to start your career. But if you don't need that structure and you like the pace and the uncertainty and the challenges of a startup, that's a great place. Both of them can be good. I agree. It's all how you how you go into it with an open mind. Yep. Well, Ben, we've covered a lot about Veratuity and what you're doing there, kind of your vision of the, the future of the industry, and then obviously a little bit about you and your background. Is there anything else you wanted to go over before we wrap up? No, I really appreciate you taking the time. Yeah, absolutely. What's the best way for people to learn more about the company? Sure. We're at uh, www.veratuity.com and you can go to our website and check it out. If you have any questions, you, know, you can always drop me an email. I'm ben.turner at Veratuity. Okay, perfect. Ben, thank you so much for being on the show today. I know your time is very valuable, so I appreciate you being here. Thank you. And to all you listeners out there, I thank you for your time as well. And until the next story. Thank you for joining us this week on the Leaders in Payments podcast. Make sure you visit our website at leadersinpayments.com, where you can subscribe to the show and where you'll find our show notes. If you enjoyed listening, please share on your social channels as well. 